Hi, I'm Patrick McLennan with next week's Big Soaps in a Nutshell. Janine is testament to the fact that marriage is a calming institution with the power to change even the meanest soul into a sweetheart. Hang on, I'll start that again. Janine's marriage to Ryan has done nothing to change the scheming murderess. And all hell breaks loose when she learns Ryan has secretly met with Stacy to get his name on Lily's birth certificate. Not only that, he's bunked off her birthday to do it. Ryan lies and says he was actually buying her a gift, but a born liar can always spot another liar. So Janine plots her revenge, and at the party at the Slaters, the psycho heads up to Lily's cot and steals her. Then she makes Ryan get in the car with her and tells him they're all starting their lives afresh in France. She's not right in the head, this one. And when she gets to a level crossing, she stops on the tracks and tells Ryan to decide, is it her or Stacy? As a train approaches, a desperate Ryan screams at her to start the car, but there's no response when she turns the key. Carol, meanwhile, has gone right off the deep end, and after the funeral, when Alan rebuffs her advances, she downs booze and decides to end it all. Next, we're in Weatherfield. Becky is picking up the pieces after Kylie's departure, and when social services call, wanting to see how she and Max are doing, she's forced to fib. Becky pretends that she's Kylie, but then the social worker says she wants to meet Becky. Didn't see that one coming, did she? Then suddenly, Kylie's back, with a Greek bloke on her arm, but she announces it's just a fleeting visit. She's heading back to the med. First, she's got some business to do, though. She wants what's best for Max. Yeah, right and suggests he should stay in Weatherfield. Becky offers her a thousand quid, but Kylie says it's not enough, at which point sensible Steve steps in and refuses to buy a child. Kylie warns him that either they up the offer or they'll never see Max again. David, meanwhile, goes back to court, hoping his epilepsy diagnosis will get him bail, just as Graham gets out of hospital. Graham's perplexed. He knows David did attack Tina, despite Audrey suggesting she made it up, but did his mate really try to kill him? Finally, we're in the Dales. It's D-Day for Ryan, and help is at hand in the very pretty shape of Maisie Wilde, who's borrowed a backbone from who knows where. But the prosecution take to her like a staffy to a postman, and Ryan does his cause no good when he loses his temper. The jury doesn't like that one bit. Meanwhile, Nathan's trying to escape from the barn and officers kidnap him money, but instead he's stuffed in the boot of a car when they're disturbed by Jay and Chaz. Of course, I can't reveal the verdict as Ryan returns to court, but whatever the outcome, the kidnapper threatens Nathan that he'll get his own brand of justice. There's massive drama on Wednesday when the kidnapper invites Maisie to the barn to hear Nathan confess that it was really Natasha who killed Mark. Then Natasha bursts in and confirms the truth. But what will she do next? I don't think she'll be suggesting a few quiet sessions with a family therapist. Rona's keen to keep her and Patty's tryst secret from Marlon, but then implies to Patty that she's fallen for him. Whoa, girl. That's a bit too much information for this bet. He's busy trying to keep his friendship with Marlon on track. Somehow I think the chef is going to grill Patty under a high heat when he comes the truth.